So this is Artesian Builds. Now, uh, Artesian Builds is a, uh, uh, was a uh, company that uh, made computers. And uh, it is a thing. It's a culmination of must and investigative journalism. We draw on conclusions on Artesian Builds and its former CEO. We've heard uh, ex-CEO Noah Katz has considered suing us for this story. We are proceeding with this video and nothing has been removed. We will always advocate for consumers. Jesus. This is the biggest scam we've ever covered. The fuck? This is insane. This ghost town of a warehouse is filled with active build tickets, dozens of power supplies, video cards locked in cages, and there are several areas where it's as if it was frozen in time. Build stations remain as in-progress work sites. Even the employees' drinks and lunch were left behind. And what is it, the rapture? Is this, it's like, this, bro, this shit was a revelation. It's a Thanos snap, yeah. Bins remain partially unpacked from a team that was once excited to move into this brand new multi-million dollar warehouse. Dude, that, that sucks. For them. The computers you're seeing, those are still due to customers today, including some who are- <laughs> Bro, I saw this on Twitter. There was like a streamer that Artesian Builds had made a PC for him, and he saw his exact PC being fucking auctioned off on eBay or some shit. Yeah, Rami, I don't know which one it was. I didn't see what his name was, but I thought that was funny. The thing is, like, before anybody, like, it is funny to see the stupid shit, right? It's funny, but y'all got to keep in mind, there's a lot of people who lost their jobs over this that had nothing to do with any of the bullshit, and uh, it sucks. Like, it fucking sucks for them. Probably watching this video right now. We got inside of the foreclosed Artesian Builds offices in what turned out to be one of our biggest investigations yet. Holy As we try to unearth what went wrong for many of the customers who got screwed by Artesian Builds. Oh my god. This video is brought to you by us and store.gamersnexus.net. This is our most in-depth investigative journalism piece yet. And to commemorate the death of Artesian and our deep dive, we're launching a new limited edition PC component skeletal shirt. This shirt is in our limited line of ultra shiny cool. foil shirts. And we've only done a few shirts like this before. The new skeletal foil uses water cooling tubes complete with terminating fittings and three-way junction splits to form an accurate rib cage. This is well, a so it, it so this shirt can keep you cool in the summer with the water cooling. That's great. I never had a shirt that could do that before. Wow. On side individually sleeved cabling connecting to inductors oh and MOSFETs centrally. The heart is made out of a GN logo with a golden pump cap bordering an RGB LED strip cool. with extensive attention to detail along it. On the back, these technology. super comfortable 100% yeah. cotton shirts run a voltage regulator module design down the spine with similar blue and silver foil to stand out. Our limited foil designs always sell out fast and we will not make them again. So go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab one today and help fund our next deep dive investigative journalism piece. Thank you for good. your support. I'm always glad to see people advertising their own merch and their own stuff, right? I mean, it's like, it's good to take sponsors too, but it's always great to see people that are really kind of taking it into their own hands and selling their own stuff. That's good. It's hard to do that. It's a lot harder. Hopefully I don't get arrested. I'm not doing anything wrong, but it's definitely not normal. Wow. Oh my God. So they found out where it was. Present day post collapse. Artesian Builds went from being a robust pre built PC manufacturer with two locations and 60 to 70 employees doing $20 million a year in revenue to That's a, lot of a bankrupt money. warehouse with over a million dollars of inventory still locked 20 up mil? and still owed to customers today. People who will never see the PCs they ordered and who will never get their rma repair units that are stuck inside. I just hope they get their money back, right? Like maybe they're not gonna get their PCs, that might not be realistic, but I definitely hope they, they got their money back. The computers that were in here, they had been sitting in here for months. And that includes, again, repair units that existing customers sent in for repair with their personal files, work files, family photos, tax documents, what? anything like that, stuck, trapped on the systems, imprisoned, where 
they will never be able to get them back because all of it is being sold at auction. As for what? There's what? No, are you kidding? No, fuck it. Oh my god. For how any of that happens? How you go from 20 million a year in revenue to bankrupt? Well, a lot of that is because of this guy. Oh, and there's the re-roll. And Bro, I still fucking memed that. Oh my god. It's like we got Scuff Star Lord over here torpedoing his own fucking company. And unfortunately, the follower count is extremely, extremely flat. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a no. This is an ambassador giveaway. This is not for people that aren't taking streaming seriously. We need you to be promoting, frankly, yourself and us if we're giving you a free computer. We run the contest, we make the rules. It's a slight change because we don't want to give PC people that quit playing the game. This is an ambassador giveaway and you've got to be collaborating with my company to get my free computers. Sponsored by Intel, thanks Intel. Even though- Isn't that crazy? I mean, the guy, it, it's like he, uh, made himself look pretty bad. I mean, he really did. It, it, it's like, I, I'll, the, the thing is, it's his own fault for giving Artesian partnerships to literally anyone with 20 viewers or more. Of course it's his own fault. Of course it is. Absolutely. It, it's like at a certain point, if you're going to go and do that, you, you got to think to yourself about like why, like, it's just, it, it's just dumb. Like, mega asshole. Yeah, he's just, it's like the way he talk. It, it's just, oof, oof. A uh, million dollar CEO. Yeah, it's like it's a fifteen hundred dollar PC. Who gives a fuck? Oh, that now infamous live stream was an absolute train wreck. It's all. I always find it to be fucking crazy whenever people like that. Like it's like you hear about this shit. It's the same with like politicians, right? It's like you hear about like some politician. It's like, oh man, like he took a ten thousand dollar bribe. Like, bitch, what the fuck do you mean? There are kids that play Fortnite, nineteen years old, that have more fucking integrity, and they weren't. T they won't take a hundred thousand dollar sponsorship from. Ray Shadow Legends. Meanwhile, you got United fucking state senators. You got fucking CEOs that are trying to finesse fifteen hundred dollars. Come on, man. It's not the only reason Artesian builds went out of business. They were doomed sad. a long time ago. And today we're gonna be showing you the collapse of Artesian builds from the inside. This was at one of their two old locations. The last time we were here was one day after the implosion of Artesian builds. And now we're back to see how it's gone. The last time also was right when Artesian fired all of its staff via Twitter without notice publicly. That we're sad to announce that effective now we are freezing and suspending all activities. Ongoing analysis by outside counsel for reorganization to ensure fair treatment of clients, creditors, or employees. I guess we can assume that analysis didn't happen. Uh, we expect more info by the month's end. We are open to assistance slash investment. I remember Train. Uh, Train actually was going to invest into Artesian, but it's like, I'm glad that he didn't. I, I am, because it's like, it's like if you have a captain who just keeps running the ship, into icebergs or into the wall into a mountain it's like if you give the captain a new ship it's still going to end up in another iceberg right i mean because it's the same captain yeah that's really what it was bro he almost got it twisted yeah i mean he's got better fucking well he's got better luck playing that fruit game and he never wins that one but i'm fucking invested in this shit at this point, uh, we're examining a potential employee-led buyout of the company. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Staff via Twitter without notice publicly. That was Surprise. how they found out that they lost their jobs. That God is offended. That wasn't super. Okay. Even with that expensive, nice building, Boy, it rained at my house for the first time in like a month yesterday. I was so happy. Artesian had every reason to make this work. Yeah. They were shipping upwards of 800 pre-built computers every month. 
They went from doing God zero damn. dollars to two point two million dollars in revenue in just two years. By the third year in business, the year that they shut down, they were doing twenty million in revenue. They were on track for thirty million of revenue in the fourth year, up until CEO Noah Katz ran it into the ground. That bro, that's a that's a lot of money. It's like it's crazy how somebody a revenue doesn't equal profit. No, it doesn't. But like the company was worth a lot of money. Uh like I mean he this dude like he like he was making money. OTKPCs win? What's the do? It's a lot of work to set up something like this. Okay, let's be honest. Today then Artesian Builds still owes about 800 builds and about $1.8 million to its yeah. customers. And that's not counting whatever days. it or its owners will owe once the pending lawsuits conclude. When we were investigating this, we found that about a dozen or so former employees noted to us that they had not received the entirety of their last paycheck. And we all I always, whenever I hear stuff like that, I think of the guy who's running over the hill with a bag of money and he's looking over. You know, that's a, that's like the picture I think of, right? It's like, that's the whole thing. Yeah, he took the money and ran, exactly. Uh, it, it's just nuts, man. You just have to halt everything, actually move whatever money wants to a secure place so we could access it. Being that the entire company was in its parents' name, all the loans were taken out from his parents, Artesian was a disgusting company. I mean, it's again, like some dude, and isn't it sad, right? It, it, it's like definitely like that's a fucking that's not a red pill that's a black pill right is that this guy who realistically probably had no fucking business running this was on top of it popping off because of his parents he was making all this money he had all of these opportunities because of his fucking parents see guys listen all you need to do is uh wake up at four in the morning uh work out before the sun comes up uh meditate for two hours uh grind really hard and eat healthy and also have rich parents that pay for all of your business ventures that's all you need to do yeah also are aware of at least one active lawsuit currently being taken at against least. artesian builds or its owner who now has to navigate the waters of making sure he hasn't accidentally pierced the corporate veil somewhere so that brings us to just some of the indicators of where the troubles lie with our piercing artesian. the corporate veil if you guys uh, don't know this is my understanding of it if there's anybody that knows it better they probably do know it better than me uh, it, that's effectively whenever you mix your own personal finances with the corporation's finances, and then they can hold you personally accountable for actions that the corporation does. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, okay. So, so there you go. And builds at this point, but there are many more, and not all of them are purely personnel and HR issues. We should probably start by saying how we got into the warehouse, since we've already heard that Noah Katz apparently wants to sue us for defamation, among other things, as if we're the ones who said this. With a record of zero purchases and a falling off following. Falling a bro. He actually ratio plus you fell off him? Oh my god. He actually, he hit him with that. Damn. Drawing this name. Or who said this? Oh, I'm a Dumbo. Or did this? It was all above board. We contacted the brokers. I see. Here's the thing is if, if they had done a giveaway and they had said that you have to have 5,000 followers or less or sorry, or more to enter into the giveaway and the person didn't have that many then I think it would be totally fucking fair for him to yeet and delete and here goes the reroll, right? It would have been totally fucking fair, totally fine. There would have been like one person on, you know, Twitter, I can't believe he does this. This is just more. I can't wait to eat the rich. You know, but nobody really give a fuck, right? It was because, he did, yeah, you just put it in the rules. And by nobody proxy, the landlord, and they were more than happy to accommodate us. Right. And yeah. if you guys can just, like, make sure you 
if, if it's okay with you, you guys can just make sure you're either photographing or videoing the yeah, inside of the place so that we can yeah, you, appreciate it. Take pictures and okay. okay, cool. This is especially because Artesian shut down within days of moving into and occupying the new space, Damn. leaving the landlord and the brokers without a tenant after a lot of customization and months of work and construction went into it. So it's not- That sucks, bro. Like they actually, they're probably out like, uh, would y'all say 30? Probably 30 grand? I say 30 grand? Somewhere around there? Couple hundred, bro, like, it, like, I, no, nah, more than that? Like you, you or, it, or, or, all right, so if you, if you take the whole contract, yeah. But I just mean like the initial costs. Like I, y'all, y'all think it's more? It's in California. Maybe that's it. Like I, I, I just feel like over here, that's about how much it would be. In California, maybe you're probably right. Honestly, God damn. I, I, I lowballed that for sure. God fucking damn, that's a lot. Such of a surprise that they were happy to talk to us about their former or would-be yeah, tenant. Yeah, they'd be upset. And we also got information from staff and from company Slack logs, which included information from Noah himself I see, I see from the Slack logs. So let's talk about what really went wrong. When the former CEO wasn't busy going out of business and leaving landlords without a tenant, he could be found recalling pay from contractors and employees, putting them into debt in their personal PayPal account. Bro, that's some fucking Donald Trump shit. Like, uh, my dad said that there was this one woman that they had to work with uh, uh, whenever he was, uh, he, he was like an executive at a publishing company, right? And so, like, he would hire out freelancers sometimes to have shit done. And, and like, there was this one fucking group of these people that he would do this with. And, and, and like, this woman that, that they would pay would sometimes sue her own fucking people. It's nuts, man. Nine, dude, think about like if you're a small business, $9,000. Well, like that could actually like if you if you were not doing well, especially like today, right? With like inflation and like the economy, this could put you under. And what seems to yeah, this could make you have to take out lawyers to be fraudulent or potentially illegal. We'll come back to the more serious evidence like this that we've accumulated a little bit later. Artesian was run by an eccentric man with unique tastes. He What's this here? Anyone wants to put your in a dinosaur? Hit me up. Sixty-five million year old hardrosaur bones. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Two thousand five hundred blue resin, so it's like a river. Kind of regretting not using yellow amber. So he put dinosaur bones in a PC case. But like, if I saw this at the thrift store, I'd be like, man, that's broken. Like, I don't want that. That's weird. Yeah, it looks like shit. It does. It actually does look like shit. This is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen in my whole life. I always hate to see whenever people take something like this, it should be scientific and then they turn it into bullshit like this. I'm not a fan. This small form factor case by allegedly purchasing real dinosaur bones and arts and crafts gluing them to the chassis and what was supposed to bring to life this render of a dinosaur bone case commissioned from an artist. Now that's not quite as unique as the $300,000 Tyrannosaurus skull used in marketing attempts to customize builds, but it's still pretty unique. Artesian was a company that found more success in its core PC building business than it knew what to do with. Yeah. mostly built on the back of its unfortunate team and yet instead of focusing on getting well it's like a lot of people want to have the, the reality is like now that pcs are easier to uh to get to right pc gaming's much more accessible you have way more people that are able to just like they want to be able to buy a pc and get into pc gaming but they don't want to have to make a pc so uh, like this is like a big thing a lot of people want to have this PCs out the door, GP tirelessly going down. Yeah. tried to expand into irrelevant categories. The company they played with think selling about home goods, like cheesecakes, ordered direct to consumer Bro, categories. The company played with selling home Is it was this Mike Liddell? We're gonna see sandals after this? We get some Rudy Giuliani tweets about this shit? What the fuck? Goods, like cheesecakes, ordered uh, are, are since a freaking cheesecake. Okay, that's just a gift. That's whatever. Direct to consumer jigsaw puzzles of PCs, cutting That's boards, cool. and slippers. 
painting a picture of a company run by lost leadership, unaware of the unthinkable success it had already inadvertently stumbled into. Yeah. And the leadership wasn't only lost in bizarre home goods. Its founder and CEO is also obsessed with the idea of internet fame and celebrity. This is something we experienced firsthand and entirely in a uh, bro like it's like any time that you get people that are trying to do that it is just never going to be good because like this is the kind of person it's like the the more that I see about this individual and, and like I've never met this person I have no idea it seems like a kind of person that is uh like they want to be one of those like well-known successful businessmen you know what I mean? Like they, they want to be like a, a Mark Zuckerberg or like Elon Musk or Richard Branson or somebody like that. You know, that that's what they want to be. And, and like they, they forgot the fact that, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, you know, they came up with an idea nobody else was doing. I was just building a PC. Yeah, lady from Theranos. Yeah, that's actually a better one. Elizabeth Holmes. I, I think that's her name. Yeah appropriately when trying to interview him about the downfall of his company in the days before it closed. I'm an influencer, but I'm also an executive. And don't just take our word for it. In the what company's internal but I'm also an executive. In the days before it closed. Thanks for letting you know she's account of studio equipment by bringing lights in it would meet your favorite foods and make lunch something. Um okay. We don't let companies take us to dinner at trade shows. Yeah. Uh, the reason why a lot of different like news uh, media places don't do this is that uh, they don't want to have it to be like where there's any sort of like assumed like uh, quid pro quo, right? Where like we do this for you, and, like we do you this favor, and then you know you're gonna help us out whenever there's a situation where you can help us out, right? Conflict of interest. It's just better to not do that. This is my company. Yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, so an executive. And don't just take our word for it. And an in the company's internal Slack, when employees were begging the CEO to please apologize for dismissing and disrespecting smaller creators, he made statements like these. When confronted by employees that publicly disrespecting free marketing vectors, whom Artesian referred to as an ambassador, Katz said to his staff, wait, what? They're my buddies. What the fuck? If they aren't, that's the whole problem. That's the whole problem, guys. Am I not being clear? In the internal server, he continued, stating, quote, I literally built this brand to be their friends. That's the whole point of being live. I want them all to know me. This will be their friend. Always be very worried whenever there's a company that says everybody here is a family. Because what that really means is that it means that we are going to make you work more than what you would normally work. And because we're a family, you shouldn't expect to get paid more money. Yeah, it, it, it is. That's a that's a oh, that's a red flag. Yeah, that's a oh, that's a situation. Uh, this is my giveaway. I give away free stuff. People so happy uh, again, make a video. What do they want from the CEO? Then it's not friendly. I mean, I would say it was not friendly. Like the way that that shit just got dismissed. That shit's not friendly. It can go both ways, though. No, I mean, absolutely. But, like, I mean, I think that this is just a, like any time. Like, I, I have no problem taking the side of a company if I think the company is right. Because there are people that fucking try to get shit over on a company. And then they try to, oh, I'm the little guy. Well, sometimes the little guy's an asshole. Sometimes the little guy's wrong. It's just that this isn't one of those cases. Friends, that's the whole point of being live. I want them all to know me. This aligns with other actions Artesian took. Cass what an idiot. Like, the thing is, uh, what's this here? I want them. And, and I did just address that they can talk to me. It's like, it's better to just not fuck. Like, man. Them all to know me. This aligns with other actions Artesian took. Katz's personal assistant, for example, stated in the company Slack during a fiery debate with the CEO that views and subs were purchased. We Duh. Because if you have a bigger, the thing is that like, why does, why do people view bot? Well, it's because it works. Why would you, why would you not view bot if it works? Because like it, it makes it look like you're popping off. It makes it look like you're doing stuff. It tracks real people too. Yeah. It's nuts. We later learned from staff that this was during West Coast Builds going live 
particularly the CEOs or other people close to him. Yeah. For all of the public issues that we all already know about, like consulting smaller creators who are doing yeah. free marketing for Artesian for the chance to maybe win a PC if they're popular enough, there were more issues internally mm -hmm. that weren't revealed really until we started digging into them. So the first person, of course, who knew about the company's impending demise was CEO Noah Katz. This is not a of surprise. Course. And in the final days of Artesian's life, the CEO set to withdrawing approximately $10,000 from the company's PayPal account. Uh, and this is information that we have verified through bankruptcy hearing records that are- What a fucking idiot. Like, is it really worth piercing the corporate veil and getting yourself held accountable for 10 grand? Like, I mean, it, it's just like, I mean, really? <laughs> Bro, like fucking 14 year old Fortnite pros have more integrity than that. Oh my God. Filed with the court that we were able to obtain. So with the walls closing in around him, the That's CEO so began dumb. clawing back money that was paid to contractors and staff in every way possible. Of course. A former staff member named Abby is currently in debt 3,900 British pounds on her PayPal account, or about $4,700 US. This is because what was left of Artesian- He refunded or it? Artesian Futures, or whatever it is now, recalled all payments made to her during the tumultuous downfall of the company. PayPal sided with cats because of the company's size, probably. Oh man, bro, like, it's just, it's- Oh my god, I hope now that this video is out that this person will be able to get their fucking money back. It can't get any worse, bro. It's not even, it's like a third done. Like, that is bad. PayPal, the thing is, like, PayPal, a lot of this shit is just automated. The, the truth is that it's really hard to get your shit looked at fairly. And PayPal, what they do, and this is what a lot of companies do, they have an algorithm and a system that works 99% of the time. But the problem is that you guys know how many 1% mounts do I have? I got a lot of 1% mounts. And that leaves a lot of people that get fucked over. And presumably because they didn't know that it was going under. Yeah. And because Abby doesn't know anyone who really works at PayPal, she's kind of screwed. She's yeah. in the UK. She's not able to really feasibly sue Katz, who likely has no money yeah. left anyway. PayPal would be the only avenue. The PayPal cases show two disputes. One for $2,965 or so US, and one for $2,570 US. We obtained text logs between Abby and Katz, where Katz, shown on the left, is told that with the COO, Nick, having departed, Abby will need to send the invoice to him. This all happened in December. Katz pays the amount in December of 2021, well before the... It's just like... The, the thing is, the worst part about this is that this is what... Honestly, you know who else did this shit? I heard a lot of stories about it. I, I think even Rich can tell you about this because he, he lives in New York. Is fucking Donald Trump did this shit. Is that they know that they can take advantage of people and fucking mess up their money and do something that is wrong, but they know that they have more resources, more power, and more time, so it is not worth Abby, in this case, and other people in the other case, it's not worth their time to pursue legal action. It sucks, man. Collapse, and the thread revives in May of 2022, mm -hmm. after everyone had already been publicly fired. Abby kindly suggests, probably too kindly, that the text thread serves as evidence for the dispute and asks Katz to keep things amicable at the end. Yeah. He refers Abby to his lawyers. And just for the record, we have emailed the CEO's lawyers for comment, but at this time, at least of filming, we haven't heard back. Good now, this isn't team. the only charge they shouldn't have said At one anything. time, especially early in the year, Artesian Builds was in desperate need of GPUs in order to complete builds that were partially assembled but could not ship due to the GPU shortage. And this will build into yeah. a much bigger issue that we'll get to later That's on. That's been an issue the for company a while. had upwards of millions of dollars of inventory, which we've verified on the balance sheet, sitting, waiting to ship, and unable to, because it was missing a GPU. So the company ties up all this money and all these builds and cannot actually ship them. 
creating just a massive liabilities sheet. So as a result of this, Artesian started seeking GPUs from employees and from eBay because they needed them to sell the actual builds. There's nothing inherently wrong with buying a GPU from an employee of the company if the company and the employee come to an agreement about it. I That's don't see anything wrong with that, fine. no. The problem is the payment of it. Uh, and by the way, there's also... I, I, I can see problems with it. Like, this is something that, like, this is... It, it definitely... You go into the realm of potential uh, uh, unethical behavior. It's not fundamentally bad, but there are just so many ways that it could be bad that it's one of the things that many people would just try to avoid. Mining PC is being sold from AB Mining, but that's a later story. One particular employee paid about $1,120 US for the 3070 Ti and then sold it to his employer, Artesian Build, which then went on to sell the GPU in a build upgrade for $1,500 at the company. So they did well, they made some money on it. Yeah. In May of 2022, Katz, or whoever's handling his finances at this point, challenged the transaction on PayPal and claimed to PayPal that the transaction was fraud. That's- Bro, like that's actually illegal. Like the thing is that, like that's straight up fucking illegal. Oh my God, $1,500 for 1370. Yeah, like that's, like this guy's going to jail. Yeah, I mean like that's, the, the thing is like a lot of this other stuff, like besides like him not paying, like him just being an asshole, it's just like, ah, this guy's a jackass. Who cares, right? Just whatever. But like that's, th th yeah, it's just stealing. Like, pff, fuck. It's wire fraud. Yeah, Ironic. it's 100% wire fraud. PayPal sided in favor of Artesian and Katz, or his money managers, once again, and clawed back the money from the former employee, who is now short both a GPU and $1,120. Holy in shit. In another scenario that was similar, Artesian Builds previously purchased a GPU from one of our viewers on eBay and that viewer sent us all this documentation. This order was placed in January of 2022 for an RTX 3080 Ti priced at $2,250 at the time. Bro, isn't it crazy how much, how much that shit was? Oh my God. The order was shipped to Artesian's West Coast warehouse and it was insured, meaning that there was a signature of receipt. If you look at the receipt, which we have, it was actually purchased by AB Mining or Artesian Builds Mining making this potentially even scummier. The dispute was filed on May 25th, meaning it was four months after receipt of the GPU. So the GPU is long gone at this point. The reason provided is, quote, buyer did not recognize the transaction. So he filed it as fraud. I hope that people know, like, so this shit right here is like wire fraud. It's like wire fraud is like one of those it's like, you know, like whenever you sign a TOS and it says at the bottom, we can terminate your account for anything. It's kind of like one of those catch all things. And it's one of the things that they get people for, for taking advantage of something that's not necessarily written directly into the law. So I, I think that on a hundred fucking percent, this is wire fraud. Like FBI is going to get you. Yeah. Like it, it's not even remotely close. They'll get your ass that one. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because, you know, the fact is, like, the FBI, people love, bro, they love getting people like this. Like, imagine you work at the FBI. This piece of shit, like, you, you go to work in the morning looking forward to, to ruin his day, to ruin his life. This is what the, this is what you, this is why you, why you got the job. Yeah, it's a justice boner. Yeah, exactly. This guy's your wet dream. Yeah, they're going to get his ass 100%. Upon further investigation and to vet the source, we also obtained official USPS government documentation noting the delivery of the product to Artesian Builds as certified by the US government's postal service. Jesus. The money mismanagement didn't stop there. Katz handed down a certified command from mail. legal to halt all refunds to customers, and this was a knee-jerk reaction to the streaming mishap. So as people were- Go ahead and stop issuing refunds, thanks. Oh my God. It's like, why do you say, why do you say 
Oh my God! Why do you say this? Like he's going to jail. Like, listen, if I was, if I was in his position, you should never say it like that. He should have said that look, we need to freeze our financials. We need to do so because you know this can be admissible. You know they're going to screenshot this shit. You know they can fucking check the records if you get like, like, like what are you fucking stu like? It, it is just so it's the wording for it. Because if you have the wording, you can say like, oh, well, that wasn't what I meant or something like that. God. Or canceling orders or backing out because of what happened on live stream. Ego and incompetence. Yeah. Artesian took a stance of no refunds, or at least as directed by Noah Katz and whoever legal is. Uh, we're not lawyers here, but blanket denying refunds as a knee-jerk reaction does, in my opinion, seem potentially fraudulent. As for why the- Yeah, it's like, I, I would not, I don't know about this. I, I, I never have, and I hopefully I never do have to go through like basically something that's like, like a fucking nuclear meltdown, right? Like, so I, I don't know, but I feel like a legal team would not tell you to do that. But I, I'm not sure. Potentially illegal decisions were made. That's best explained by looking at the company's balance sheet that we dug up. At the time of demise, Artesian Builds had about $2.1 million in assets, mostly inventory assets. So PC parts yeah, that we were saw those. builds that either have already been sold and are pending shipping or a GPU or will be sold in the future. This was contrasted starkly by the liabilities section of the balance sheet, listed at $4.1 million in the final full operating month. Of that $4.1 million, $853,000 was claimed as a, quote, loan payable to family. And that would actually oh. be Katz's parents here, claimed as a... Oh, man. Oh, my God. <sighs> quote, loan payable to family. And that would actually be Katz's parents here. This later climb. It's like the worst thing is like, he's probably somehow to a certain degree, like probably implicated his parents in this. Like, I, I don't know, but like if, if somebody really went after this, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they could be somehow liable in one way or another, it's especially depending on like how much he talked to them or how much they were involved. That's really bad to an alleged $1.2 million, even just as the company went under. And given that Katz's parents are secured creditors, the sudden increase in the loan puts them in line to get repaid during the bankruptcy proceedings. Meanwhile, customers who bought on so debit they're getting or their money didn't back. file chargebacks will be behind the parents in line, behind potentially former employees, behind institutions and suppliers, basically behind anybody who is filing a lawsuit. And the reason people who filed chargebacks might get some money back is because you are now lumped in with a secured creditor like a bank. If you look at footnote seven in the balance sheet, you'll see a quarter million dollar adjustment to the owner's investment in the closing month of the books, alongside another footnote that says increased loan from insiders. So that'd be the parents. We don't want to get too derailed by this part of the story, but just for some context, Katz's parents were deeply invested in the company uh, both financially, but they also were involved at some level in management. So they would communicate regularly with other C-suite employees, CMO, COO, people in that sort of position. Oh, boy. And with the lower ranking employees in the company. And uh, they were involved in- You know, I'm not, I've never been a fan of spanking, right? But I mean, there are certain circumstances where maybe it's the right decision. You know, maybe, Maybe you, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. Daily operations by sending Somebody needs a paddling. messages to and from employees. And just us reading over the messages and the logs, it became clear to us that there was a culture problem within the company of general disrespect between all parties. So this might... I, I, I've read about that. I, I've seen some screenshots. Uh, I, I would... It, it's really just hearsay but that's what i've seen fall largely on the ceo and the parental advisors we can't be 100 percent sure mm -hmm. of how the blame is sort of shifted there yeah but regardless of where that culture originated ultimately 
we did see a lot of mutual disrespect in the messages that were shared with us. I've like seen it, yeah. Slack server. Not good. Basically staff on one side and then CEO on the other. And that's just not conducive to ever running a successful company. And for that reason, we think it was probably doomed long before the stream. Now, we could keep going about yeah, like after the whole like aftermath, I, I saw a lot of stuff that's just people talking about how this guy was an asshole and how there were a bunch of other problems that were just kind of it, it was like internally, this was not some sort of like fucking, oh, man, this happened and now everything's gone. It was like this was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's generally sort of scummy behavior, in our opinions. Uh, and about things like when the CEO and the company Slack was shocked that anyone would quote curse him or Artesian after it had the fact that you all onboarded anyone who would personally say fuck you to me is disgusting. How can they behave like this? We should never have onboarded them. It's very sad, bro. Like my own bit. Like what a pussy. Like I don't know if we'd onboard anybody that wouldn't say fuck you to me. Because I, I don't like, we need people to think for the fucking selves. Have you committed wire fraud? I hope you guys know that if you ever said, <sighs> gentlemen, if you ever have voted in one of my polls and it was like, do you uh, fucking agree with me? Or, or like, am I bald or not? And you say yes, you have in fact committed wire fraud. Had insulted people based on their follower account. Work with someone who cursed me ever. What a pussy! Oh my god! Oh my god, man! What is this? Chill out. It's not even a big deal. Oh. Or when the crack. It's like it's also like I mean, bro. Like you're not even. Fu it's your. It's your parents' money. It's not like oh, you built this yourself. Like I did all this. Like you put some respect on my name, man. Put some respect on your last name, not your first one. Get the fuck out of here. What a joke. On staff happened after the streaming mishap, but you all get the point. All of the stuff we've been over so far, it's bad. It's pretty damning. But this was all stuff that happened more or less after or towards the end of the collapse yeah. of the company. Same and so Slack. we still need to look oh, at what led up to it yeah, and caused that fuck. collapse. Other, other than the person running it, which at this point, given the behavior, is probably enough. But there's more. And then we get into the power struggle between the East Coast and West Coast branches of Artesian Built. The East Coast was run largely autonomously. It had the operations team Smart. in it, including the COO and other people in operations and warehousing who could largely run the show on their own. The West Coast was run directly by the CEO who resided and worked there. And in terms of staff- Is this gonna be, is this gonna be like a situation where this dude's, like this, this dude's getting his feelings hurt because they're doing it better than he is? Yeah, East Coast versus West Coast. Yeah, there it is. Half. Our understanding is that the artesian built yes, split yeah. was about two to one staff on the west coast to the east coast, meaning the west coast had more staff at any given time than the east coast based on... So it's, it's going to be like a 300 Spartans versus Xerxes army. What we've yep. been informed. So there were about three to four employees building PCs on the east coast, and with these staff members for building, not uh -huh. counting support, warehousing, logistics, uh, people in the C-suite for operations or marketing or whatever, not counting any of those supporting roles, only building PCs. The East Coast branch was capable of building about 20 to 31 systems a day, depending on the complexity of the systems being built that day. And that was- That's pretty fucking good. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's pretty fucking good. Not even close, yeah. It was with its four builders. The West Coast, for comparison, from what we understand, mm -hmm. was building about three to four a day, and uh, yet it had significantly more staff. You start to see some of the unraveling here. So our investigation revealed that the company, as of its demise, had about 615 or so builds queued for the East Coast, which is clearable within a month if they had supply available and didn't go bankrupt. And that's based on information we've collected. See, 
what you have to understand is that the it's the west coast right i mean it's california bro like we can't be inside working all the time man we gotta be out at the beach we gotta be chilling you know living life uh being influencers just you know being millionaires well we can't be sitting cooped up like nerds making pcs all day i mean shit bro i mean what do you expect collected from former employees and Just this warehouse 55th was Street. the one yeah. that handled the bulk of the orders and had the most refined processes. There were an additional 170 yeah. to 180 builds queued at the West Coast warehouse located in Oakland. That's also where more of the streamer and influencer builds were prepped. And here's where the problems start. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so the California place made, like, for example, Mrs. PC. So that's the thing, bro, because like you think about like logically, so like a good CEO, like this is what, like, it, it, I'll give you an example, right? Is like, so with the gaming expo, Rich is a better host than I am in esports events. In my opinion, I think he's the best in the world. And there are other people that are maybe as good as him, but I don't think anybody's better. And you know what I said? I said, I'm okay at this, but Rich, you are the expert. You take the reins, I'll play, I'll play second, and we'll do this back and forth. Because you, it's like this guy, and the reason why, by the way, the reason why I bet he didn't do it is because of his ego. He wanted to be the guy that everybody sees making the content creators PCs. You see what I'm saying? Because anybody else could easily acknowledge that the other guys were making way more. Could easily acknowledge that. You see, you see, yeah, exactly. This was revealed in our investigation. This image shows the company's to-do list for the West Coast warehouse nearing sort of the end months of Artesian. You can see that the West Coast had about three builds per day scheduled, including one for a streamer listed at the bottom. <laughs> Yo, he ever get it? Did he ever get it or not? <laughs> no? <laughs> Oh my god. That's what he gets for ganking people, man. That's what he gets. These were the types of builds that Artesian CEO wanted to personally work on, in what we think becomes a trend of attempts to associate with the concept of internet celebrity. There, And these yes. were what the West Coast handled. Now, they also handled customer builds, so normal builds that weren't supposed to be special ones. And the way it was supposed to be set up is that the West Coast would handle builds for people closer to California and the East Coast was supposed to be for handling builds on the East Coast right because it drives down logistics costs and people get stuff faster that's the way it's supposed to work so then Makes back sense. to the image this is what the West Coast had to do on this particular Wednesday and this is what the East Coast division had to do on its Wednesday for the same day damn so that's crazy so, man, they really just had to... Yeah, they had to work their fucking ass off? Oh, my God. Getting overworked, yeah. Hey, it doesn't even fit on the page. So, this branch, it printed money for Artesian. And, and like, not only did they print money, but they also printed uh, fucking bailouts. Because, like, you think about it like this. If both of the both of the branches were doing what the what the West Coast branch, the California branch was doing, there wouldn't be a company. That's the thing; it would not be a company, and, and that's what happens. I wonder if West congratulate themselves every day after finishing their PCs. Yeah, three PCs. All right, all right, we made three guys. Yeah, okay, let's go down to the beach. All right, great. Let's let's stop by In and Out, then we'll go down to the beach. It sounds good, man. Yeah, let's go. You know, I'm gonna go to my parents' beach house. Let's have a party over there by Jesus. all accounts we could collect. The picture being painted here is one of two autonomously operating arms of the same company yeah. with little collective or collaborative action being taken between them. In interviewing team members from both locations, we got a strong sense of an East versus West mentality within the same company. And as we spoke with the staff members from the two branches, you could start to see where some of the division arose yeah it can be healthy and 
useful or productive to have a somewhat competitive mindset internally, but it has to be managed well by managers, by people higher up to ensure that. It's yeah, it's like you have to like, I, I think that too, right? Like whenever I worked at the IRS, I would always want to have like the highest production numbers out of our, of our like little fucking team, right? And, you know, there's like 40, 50 people on our team. The department was like 200. And I would get that most of the time, right? Because like I would work all the, I would work all the fucking time. And uh, the thing is that I am, I think that's good to have that, but it's like, there were some negatives with that too. There definitely were some negatives because like what would make people do uh, achievement Andy's because you were young. No, it was also because like I knew like straight up, like I knew whenever to focus on quality and whenever to focus on quantity because I was able to reverse engineer the way that they uh, would give invest, like they would, they would do like a second pass through the stuff that I would do. So uh, yeah, I was parsing. Like, I, 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 yeah, I was actually, I was unironic. I was parsing at the IRS. And, and like, so, and, and that's the thing, right? Is you do that, it's okay. But the problem is that like, whenever you create a system like that and you turn it into a game, people stop working and they start playing. And, and so it, it's, it's a very fine balance and it can get toxic really fast. It doesn't devolve into just toxicity and a backstabbing environment. That's that, what I just said. Uh, I am certain that True. some of our viewers who've worked in corporate, large corporate environments especially, probably are all too familiar with. Where That's crazy how I literally just said that. It goes from feeling like you're on a team to starting to feel like you have to watch your back for someone who wants whatever, your job, your window cubicle, whatever it may be. So easy for that to watch, really yeah. go off the rails and create a much worse situation. This is actually evolved. Exist. Now, as for why it devolved into a competitive mindset uh, instead of turning into a collaborative one, well, it's probably, I, I bet, you know, I haven't seen this, but like, I bet, you know why? I bet it's because uh, the CEO turned it into that. I bet he was the one that fucking initiated this. This image explains that pretty well. This is the quality of build we were told would get delivered between the warehouses. What you're looking at is the PC okay. build for streamer Nick Merckx. It shows how it was initially built and shipped from the West Coast branch, where the CEO directly worked on these builds. The West Looks Coast great. would build the celebrity builds often on stream, and often done by the CEO and maybe one other builder. And then the It's like, again, man, trying to get his face out there. They had to do Nick dirty like that. East Coast would beg... The thing is, it doesn't matter if the... Actually, no, I was going to make a joke about how it didn't matter to the PC. I was going to make a, a him using a controller joke, but I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm actually not. I'm actually not going to do it because I think people could take it seriously. Nick Merckx is a legend, but, you know, he does use controller. The West Coast branch to ship them the builds for a final I, I, one. I want to make sure no, before nobody fucking makes this out of context or anything. Nick Merckx would absolutely fucking dominate me in, in like any FPS. He is a god. Okay. Wait, I, I, this, is, this is a controller thing. Over. In this Nick Merckx build, that's exactly what happened. The East Coast branch handled the final packing and distribution of the system. So let's see. So what? So that one's not there. Um, man. So like maybe the East Coast was messing up because they don't have as many cords on there, you know? Yeah, maybe maybe it's because the East Coast, like, they probably don't have, like, that cord's not there, like, this cord's not there, like, bro, they're not even using the cords. Damn, no wonder they were able to make so many PCs. And when it arrived from <gasps> oh the West God. Coast, the lower level East Coast employees immediately wow. set to work fixing the cabling mess that was delivered for the system. It was going to be one of the yeah. largest collaborations with a the streamer they'd ever done. So they wanted it Nick to Merckx look like is huge. it was built well. Artesian CEO wasn't particularly fond of Nick Merckx and the crew anyway. What the fuck? Why? Can we give a thousand dollar off Thunder PCs to defray the entire ransom we owe them? That'd be cute. Bro, man, fuck that. D dude, uh... And we're also curious if Nick Merckx knows that Katz referred to their paid partnership as, quote, ransom. 
As for why these decisions to rework PCs happen... It's like from anybody else. It's like the thing is that he could just be goofing around, right? He could just be goofing. And like, it's one of those cases where this, this line, that's not a big deal, right? But like, it's in the context of the personality of the individual that we know too much about. That's different. In the first place, it's because of a difference yeah, new boot in goof. the escape exactly, rate yeah. or the rate of RMA units like or defects that yeah. escape one warehouse versus another. We were told that the normal escape rate for the West Coast was approaching 10%, meaning 10% of the product leaving would have some form of defect and either need a replacement, uh, a refund, or to be shipped back for repair. 10%? How many of you guys, uh, where you work, it's okay to mess it up 10% of the time? One in 10, like, yeah, I beat you guys, yeah. Nobody? Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, if I messed up one in 200, they were on my ass. Yeah, one in 200. Error. And the East Coast escape rate was less than 1%, typically floating in the 0.3 to 0.5% range. So, so less than, damn. That's a big fucking difference. It sounds stupid, but like I visualize these numbers on how long it would take for me to farm a mount that's a 10% mount versus a 1% mount. You, you, you know what I mean? Like that's the thing. It's like, man, this is probably like ne never happened, right? There's clearly an issue with operations between the two For branches. Real? They clearly were not following the same set of procedures. Yeah. And this is what ultimately led to Artesian burning large amounts of money really for no reason because you have two groups of people doing the same work. One is basically just going over the work that the other one had already immediately completed. And that's where we think, uh, other than the other financial mismanagement that we talked about earlier, a large portion of the money was being spent in a way that isn't necessarily immediately obvious day to day until you zoom out. The biggest ongoing liability though was builds awaiting a GPU. Artesian yeah. had many outstanding builds, either partially- Double working? Yeah, well that's the thing is that it's just, it, it's bad. Bad process management. I mean, they literally hire. Like, remember the two bobs in Office Space? That's what. That's where the two bobs come in, and the second guy that does the same thing as the first guy. They say, "So, uh, what do you do around here? You know, why couldn't the first guy just ship it directly to the customer?" And uh, then they fit. Yeah, then they fix the glitch. Problem fucking solved fleet waiting to be even started or just generally unfulfilled orders. Artesian would collect money for the order, as is normal, and then fulfill it when complete. But it had unknown timelines sometimes for GPUs, and this could lead to short-term liabilities stacking up as the orders could be canceled at any time, even though the money had been taken and potentially already recommitted to the business. That's, Arte see, like, that's the thing, right? Is like you, that's like a mistake. That's like a double mistake. Like, you should not take that many fucking orders if you know that you don't have... It's like one thing if it's a, su a, su a supply chain thing, right? It's like you had you had 1,000 and then you get 4,000 orders, but you know you've got 3,000 coming next month. That is what it is, right? It, it's okay. But, like, not only are you fucking living on a prayer, but you're also selling the fucking prayers, it's like, what, what if they want a refund? Asian would regularly send its warehouse team to purchase GPUs at full retail price or even mm -hmm. scalped on StockX just to get the lawn back ordered builds out the door before the customer might cancel it. This reduced margin, but it was better than allowing the build time and the build itself to go to waste. So and I'm assuming, by the way, I am assuming that the reason why the owner uh, did this and this is again I don't know this but if you have a lot of these orders these are effectively accounts that you have money for you have this as money so you're taking this money so you can make the company look like it is worth more money it then will cause you to be able to, to uh, get higher amounts of money for investment.
You see, you see how that happens? Yeah, because they've taken in all these orders. It's a cock, man. It's a big cock. It, it, it's a dick. It's a dick pyramid. And ended up stuck in a dangerous business cycle that a lot of businesses that go out of business find themselves in, yeah. where it was perpetually trying to chase the completion of old orders which have been long paid for and that money has probably been spent so it doesn't feel like they're making money anymore with selling new orders so you're yeah. chasing old money with new which starts to sound like something else uh and well it it, it, it's, it's it's bad it, it it's very fucking bad it's like whenever you remember like whenever you play like Tetris and like at the beginning you're at the, like the bottom two or three rows but then like the shit starts getting away from you and then you're at the top and you're just like fucking hoping that you get like one line and, and you know you get like an L or something like that and you're just fucking getting got that's what it is and the problem is what we got which is a collapse but because Artesian was constantly chasing that new wonder how <laughs> bro Honestly, man, I don't even know if he still uses this one anymore. Like, in my opinion, like I, I bet it probably doesn't. I, I bet it probably doesn't work. Like, like there's a good chance I could ask. I could ask Schlatt. I actually have no idea if it works or not. And it, it's it sucks, right? It is. Don't make him use to get. Yeah, they, no, we partnered with Artesian. We didn't know any of this shit, right? Like, we, I mean, they were selling PCs. Like, a lot of this stuff was like all internal and. uh then this happened, and we 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 pulled out of the partnership, right? Money instead of first fulfilling those already paid for orders due to GPU limitations, it was reallocating inbound GPU supply all the time. This included it being reallocated away as we join us tonight for our fourth monthly Artesian builds giveaway. Only two lucky winners of a PC built along with other prizes. So Artesian actually, bro, this is the saddest fucking, the most shameful fucking stuff, man. So Zach McElreevy, they offered Zach a sponsorship with Artesian and they would not give him a free PC. They would give him $500 of store credit towards him buying a PC from them. Fuck that. That's exactly what I told him to say. That's exactly what I told him to fucking say, man. Understand from backlog to orders too. and instead into new promotions. Artesian's leadership would butt heads about allocation to builds versus allocations to acquiring new sales. They would also reallocate supply already for streamer and celebrity builds. At there he is. There's all Baldy right there. And and so like you look at him uh, like, and that's the thing, that's what he's doing it for, right? He's doing it so he can be on Miz's stream. He, he can get the, uh, the attention and all of that stuff, man. There's Eggman right there, yeah. And, and big fucking surprise, they find a PC for that. Look who's working on the PC. Wonder why it was? Yeah, exactly. They should have had the West Coast work on it. Maybe it wouldn't have fucking overheated every day. As the GPUs arrived, rather than necessarily just sending them all to fulfilling orders. So Artesian's other managers would That's push a for YouTube the opposite. Thumbnail. They would sometimes push for fulfilling the orders instead of chasing new uh, customer acquisition. We have yeah. a lot more documentation and evidence. I mean, East Coast, that's what I meant to say. Fascinating story. But this piece is long that's what I meant at this to say, point. Yeah. And at the end of all of this, you're really left with just a few key mm -hmm. points. One of those is that Artesian Builds is now gone. It's been through bankruptcy proceedings, and the company has reformed as a new entity, which is something like Artesian Future Technologies. This is a normal bankruptcy proceeding. Artesian Future Technologies. Uh, maybe they'll do NFTs. Yeah, maybe they'll do, uh, like, uh, NFTs. Maybe they'll sell, like, you know what they should do? They should take pictures of the PCs they made for streamers and turn the pictures into PC, and turn the pictures of the PCs into NFTs and then sell those NFTs. So, like, they no longer sell computers, but they sell NFTs of computers of popular content creators. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea. 
procedure where the assets reform into a single asset. And so Artesian Build itself, as we knew it, yeah. is finished and all of its assets have been or are being auctioned off at this point. And the company was run by a man who we think was obsessed with becoming internet famous and with the idea of internet celebrity. And yeah. he's achieved that. So he has, yes. Everybody knows, everybody knows him now. So it, it, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, there it is. Next thing want to, yeah, I watched the next thing want to. Close yeah. to him. But it was at the tragic loss of a company that was a dream job for a lot of its staff. Yeah, exactly. And it was at the sacrifice of a $20 million a year business in just its first couple years of operation. That's the thing is it was so profitable. It was doing so well for them. And, and like all the guys are working there. They're fucked, you know, like he's more infamous than famous. Yeah. Well, he's famous the same as like, um, uh, fucking, uh, shit. Let me think of somebody who's famous like that. Uh, man. Yeah, yeah, am, yeah. Go ahead. We go. We go. Where is this here? I gotta find this. Uh, just like Phantom Lord, yeah. Just like Martin Screlly, student. The thing is with Martin, the the, the fact is like Martin Screlly had at least, Mar, at least Martin Screlly was entertaining. At least he was funny. That's insane. And these sacrifices also were made infinitely more successful. every opportunity to build the next Twitch celebrity gaming PC. From what we've observed, the company had a team of talented people working for it on both coasts, particularly in the management teams and operations yeah. who managed to keep things going in spite of the completely misaligned goals. But at least in the company's later months, there was a clear mutual disrespect between the CEO and his closest assigns and the rest of the company. I'm not surprised. Not also between the two coasts or branches. So this is not something that can be overcome. Everybody in the company has to work with each other in a respectful way. The company was imploding long before the stream that you're seeing again Jesus. now. Jesus. And most of that implosion was fueled by a constant pursuit of money without matching it to the same pursuit of building and shipping. I think that it was more than money. I think that it was the notoriety that mattered more, right? Because like you, you think about it from the perspective, it, it, it's like he, he was willing to, cause like the guy, like he's probably not stupid. You know what I mean? Like he's not like a stupid person. Like there are some things that are dumb, obviously about it, but at the same time, he's not like stupid, stupid. He could clearly see that the other team was outperforming him. He saw what the numbers were, and I'm sure that he was able to see what was going on, right? And I think that it was clear that he was more willing to risk all of the, the, the money and lose money in a tremendous way just to be able to be on camera making, pop, making popular streamers their PC. That, that's what mattered more to him. If you're stupid in practice, what's the difference? The difference is the intent and the genesis of the action. Where did this action come from? And that's what I think is important because if you can understand where the action comes from, you can predict future actions. In a good product. This leaves customers screwed and internal staff frustrated with what could have been motive and with the cleanup work they're having to do behind their own CEO that or sucks. behind the entire branch on the other coast. And that's not to speak of other communication issues, like the changes that the CEO made overnight or his closest to signs on the West Coast to the website, the promotions, GPU supply shifting within the company. This wasn't communicated with the company as we understand it. Surprise. Until they woke up and saw it in the morning, until the customer service reps started getting emails from customers and ambassadors asking what's going on. And they have to first go to the CEO to ask because it hasn't been communicated to them. Wow. So I bought a boat. I know what you're thinking. That's crazy. This erratic and privileged behavior. What do you think? Oh my God. 
Oh my God, man. It's a boat. It's Bobby's. What is it? What is it with people like this buying a boat, man? It's like in the mask and all of that. Like, oh my God. Dan Butzerian Jr.? No, because at least Dan Butzerian has women around him. Right? It, at least he's got these like hot chicks around him all the time. And also, Dan's got a much better beard. Like, that's a fact. That's a fucking fact. Like, you could say this dude's got a fake poker career. You could say his career is fucking fake in general. You could say everything about him is fake, but at least he's got a good-looking beard. Gang, that's crazy. This erratic and privileged behavior was fueled by a belief that the money and the GPUs that Artesian had oversold would just keep coming in. By all accounts we've received, this team absolutely loved its local teammates yeah. between each branch and the jobs they had, with several of them telling us it was a dream job. The that financial sucks. and reputational damage, though, was irreparable without replacing the CEO himself. And with that, likely a lot of the staff between both coasts. As for what's happening now for the CEO of Artesian Builds and everyone left, well, some of the group from the East Coast office has now split off to form their own new company called Phoenix PCs. That's and good. For Mr. Katz, he's changed his name and is dealing with numerous lawsuits from. He changed his name. What is he going to go to another server now too? What do you mean he changed his name? Oh my God. Yeah, he, he changed it to Star Lord. Multiple different types of parties. Uh, and it's likely we haven't heard the end of this story just yet. So, our biggest concern out of all of this. Yeah, he ninja the guild bank, changed his name, transfer the consumers servers. Who got shafted in this. Oh my God. We're left with absolutely no recourse, especially if bought on debit. And if you couldn't get into the chargebacks for institutions or for secured creditors. So, the irresponsible behavior of Artesian Builds as a company, not just the CEO, but yeah. also the CEO specifically, have led to upwards of thousands of Moses dollars of stocks. losses for each person who had a computer yeah. on purchase, who, waiting for a computer. And again, that, there's even builds that were in there for RMAs and repairs that won't make it back. I feel so, like that's bad, right? Is like having people's like personal info and shit like that. There's gotta be like liability with that. It's like, how do you get away with all this shit, man? Is this, uh, is this guilty until proven wealthy? Like, I don't know. We'll have to find out. So, it's tragic as a story. But again, we'll be back with some more on this. He thinks he's McAfee? In the future. So, thanks for watching. Support this type of work Not by going close. to store.gamersaccess.net. You can grab one of our new shirts, which are limited, or you can pick up something like a PC building toolkit, a mouse mat, a mod mat, or other items. And you can also go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for behind the scenes videos and to support our reporting. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time. What a great video. Holy fucking shit. Wow. This is amazing. Like, I, I, I honestly, like, this was so well put together. I, I really, like, this is really, really, really fucking good. Like, I, I'm going to link this to you guys. I want everybody to go ahead and send it some support. And uh, this is by Gamers Nexus. I've never watched a video from them before. This is, as far as I know, the first video that I've ever watched of theirs. So please go ahead and give them some support. Give it a like uh, as much as you guys can, man. The fact they got uh, into the building is nuts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At least McAfee had a respectable drug addiction. Bro, I actually talked to him uh, just a, a little bit. Like I was, we, I was actually, I was going to talk to Train about like trying to get him to come on on the Scuff podcast. And, and like then they put him in jail and like they, they got his ass, man. I was sad never that shit happened. And uh, yeah, there we go. Before he died, yeah. Yeah, this was like maybe uh, three years ago, four years ago. And uh, fuck, man, subscribe. Yeah, I will. This, As I said, it's the first time I've ever seen their content before. This is really well put together. And uh, I, I think, honestly, uh, in terms of the... The only thing that, like, I bet there, there's a reason for this, right? Like, they're not going to go and, 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 like, they probably have, like, a clause in their contract and shit like that for, like, non-disparagement. So that's probably why he didn't have interviews with the former employees, because I'm sure that, you know, like, he tried to contact them. But it, it's, it, it's not a surprise. But this video, I think, was pretty much fucking perfect, man. Uh, it was. One of their videos for Intel video got ranked uh, R18. I don't know what that is or not. Yeah, I, I know. And help them get new jobs? I hope so, yeah. It, it's nuts, man.
And uh, watching a video in the gaming chair. Yeah, what's this shit? Give me one second. And uh, for uh, rarely do videos like this, uh, but if it's like you, PCs and numbers, this channel's awesome. Well, let me see what these guys got for like uh, content. Like I'm, I'm gonna watch the Nixian video after this. So like, mo okay, so they mainly talk about like GPUs, PCs. Wow. So like this was kind of like out of left field for them. I'm glad they did this. That's crazy. Like it, it's insane how much people like. Cause the good thing about this is that they really do know PCs. They understand PCs very well. So like they can pick apart a situation like this in a way that you know a, an average reporter on I don't know Fox News isn't going to be able to know. They, they've got no idea. They covered the New Egg case as well. I've never seen the New Egg thing. I might look at that later on. And uh, if, if you guys want me to, if you link it in Reddit, now obviously like we got a lot of shit to do, so I'm not going to look at everything today, but I I'll look at it another day. Uh, another piece on MSI. Uh, the dude's review tech, uh, but isn't bullshit you? Yeah, that's great, man. And I, yeah, again, I, I think this is great. Extreme deep dives and uh, the like to expose like corporations. Yeah, it's important to make sure you're getting things out as much as possible, and, and you're as much you're as much above the board as possible. Because like, the fact is, like with PCs, it's the same thing like with cars. Uh, but I think it's especially true with PCs because of like, how like in tune the audience is. Is that like people that are buying PCs, they want to know like what the fuck is going on. Like nobody wants to buy a PC and have that shit break. Nobody wants to have a buy a PC, spend out fucking $1,800, be six months out after the order, and you're still waiting every day at the door, you know, wondering if somebody fucking stole it. That's the thing. And, and so, yeah, this is a, uh, it's a core purchase. Yeah, especially it's a core purchase. Well, not only is it a core purchase, but it's a core purchase for enthusiasts, right? So, like, you're talking about, like, if somebody buys a, like a, an Audi R8, right, for example, or something like that. Like, this is an enthusiast car. This is something people drive, and, and they, they buy, and they take extra levels of, like, carefulness with this. And so that's why it's even more important. So, like, yeah, to have all these loose ends and everything like that, what a fuck-up, man. Uh, what an absolute fuck-up. And, uh, yeah, imagine buying a pre-built PC. People are talking. No, people, no, it's not. People are not stupid for buying a pre-built PC. Here's the reality, right? Like, let's think about it like this. Let's say you work as an electrician. You make $25 an hour. So you don't know anything. Well, actually, if you work as an electrician, you know a lot about making computers because fucking electrical boards are pretty much motherboards. But let's assume uh, you're a plumber instead, right? Let's say you're a plumber and you don't fucking do any of this shit, right? Yeah, spot it. Yeah, actually, like that's a, that's another one. Yeah, electrician knows this shit probably better than most people that make PCs. But um, let's say you're a plumber. You, you don't know what you're doing, right? You got no idea. And it's going to be basically 250 extra dollars for you to have this PC built. So 250 extra dollars. So if you're making $25 an hour, that's 10 hours. So you don't know anything about making PCs. You've got to research this, you've got to put it together, and you've also got to assume that it gets done right. All of those things need to happen within 10 hour period in order for it to be worth your time to construct the PC yourself rather than just having it pre-built. The reality is that many people have the $250 and they don't have the 10 hours. They've got three kids, they've got two wives, five jobs. They don't have time for that shit. So a lot of people make the decision, I'm going to get a pre-built PC from a place that I trust at a good price. It's a markup. Of course it is. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for it to be made. The decision already to be made for you. That's a good thing. But there are a lot of people, a massive audience. You can see that with their revenue. There's a massive audience of people who like that. Uh, of course, two wives. Hey, man, what can I say? And uh, let's see here. Uh, was the edge cup out of bounds in areas? We already did that. We did that yesterday. There's value in learning how your own computer works. You never have time to uh, do all your own repair, etc. Yeah, but like a lot of people don't want to have the, they don't want to spend their time doing that, right? It's not something they're interested in. So like, for example, um, like I don't really know, like I don't know how to change my own oil in my car. I've never learned how to do that. Now, I can do other stuff with the car, but I'm not a, I'm not a car enthusiast, to be honest with you. I'm just really not. I'm not a car enthusiast. Uh, I, I will say, though, if I ever buy an expensive car, if I ever do buy an expensive car, it's going to be a Shelby Cobra. That's a fact. That's a fact. If I ever, if I, it's not going to be a Lamborghini. It's not going to be a Ferrari. It's going to be a Shelby motherfucking Cobra. So I will say that. However... 
uh the, the the fact is like a lot of people don't give a fuck about that like i'm not a car guy i'm not a mechanic uh like i pay attention whenever i see mechanic do work or my dad shows me something sure but i don't really have a passion for this so i pay somebody else to do that and i, I fix whatever i know you know what i mean it, it, it's one of those things I uh, watched a lot of, uh, what's this here? Gamers Nexus building my first PC. J2 Sense, the European pod. Uh, he built a PC for Post Malone and Terry Crews. Yeah, that's badass. Holy shit. Uh, you have to do a stream on how to build a game PC. Build your own? I, I actually thought I was going to do that. Uh, actually, you know what? There's a good chance that like I'll probably be doing PC building streams pretty soon. Yeah, there, there's a very good chance that could happen. I, I don't know, because like, I've wanted to get a new PC. And, and like uh, I probably might actually even get a second one. So yeah, I'll do that. Maybe even give maybe give some away. We'll see what happens, right? But you guys, by the way, if I do give them away, you have to have at least five thousand followers, or bro, we're gonna re-roll that shit. Okay, that's a bonus roll, ten percent. Yeah, there's a ten percent. By the way, yeah, there's a ten percent chance, bro. That shit, like you turn it on, boom. Remember that? Remember the clip of speed? Yeah. <laughs> we just get a little, we get things a little bit exciting in here, you know.